This is the second half using the chair instead of getting down on the floor for most of the poses that we're going to be doing now. Or putting our hands on the chair instead of leaning all the way down to the floor. If we have not started this as a continuation of the first part, let's do a little bit of warm up first to make sure that we're ready for working more on strengthening and stretching muscles on the legs, building up strength in the shoulders and the arms. As we start tuning into our breath, as always, breathing in through our nose, out through our nose. And we finished off with part one, being in a mountain pose, having done all our warrior series. So we're going to go into a hip hinge, coming into our forward fold. As we lean forward, we make sure that we take that bony part down toward the floor, tightening our abdominals, tightening our quadriceps, allows us to get our belly lower and lower onto the floor. We never want to leave our arms hanging in space, so they're either resting against our legs, or we put them on the seat of the chair, or if we'd like, we can get a block and put our hands on the block. But we're trying to get as low as we can to get a stretch through the hamstrings, down through the hips, into the lower back, thinking about making sure that we're not rocking back on our heels or forward on our toes, a straight line from our heels through our knees up to our hips. And we're going to plant our hands wet on the chair so we can get ready to go into a down dog. Babette is one of my foster cats. Rudolph just found a forever home yesterday, so I'm down to two now. But if you see a little tuxedo walking around, that's who that is. She may be annoying us today or not as she chooses to get interested in what we're doing. But we're going to step back and step back and step back. We're trying to get a straight line from our hands through our tailbone. So once we get our feet back as far as we think we can, should, we make sure that our fingers are widespread, but then we're gonna start pushing our shoulders down toward our toes. We're trying to get a maximized stretch through the lower back, across the back of the hips, into the hamstrings. We press hard into our feet, and we try to get that stretch as much as we can backward up toward our tailbone. We work hard enough, we might feel the stretch all the way from our heels to our tailbone, then from our tailbone out toward our fingers. We're going to take this into a plank, so we're going to slowly pull our shoulders forward, bringing our shoulders forward over our hands, and then we're going to tuck our tailbone down into the ground so we have a straight line from the tips of our heels up to our shoulders and toward our head. Tuning into our breath. If we're feeling any strain at all, we're going to back out of it right away. And then we're going to come and stand tall. And we're going to do a bunch of poses from a seated position. So we're going to think about making sure that our feet are directly underneath our knees as we sit tall. We're going to think about stretching through the shoulder by using the fan, holding on to it behind us, sitting forward enough that we can move our arms behind us. And then we're gonna pull that band up toward one side as we bend the opposite elbow and bring it behind our back. Trying to pull so hard on that far arm that we're feeling the stretch across this anterior deltoid into the deltoid, pulling the shoulder blade tight behind us. And then we're going to work to the opposite side. We're going to work a little bit on a back bend, planting our hands flat on the floor, arching through the back as we push the belly forward, push the rib cage forward, pull our shoulder blades tight together, lift our chin up toward the sky. We can take our right leg and slide it back underneath the chair turning the sole of the foot up to the sky so we can get a better stretch down through the quadricep, down toward the knee. And then bringing that foot back. We'll do the same thing on the other side. 
We're going to arch, pushing the belly forward, rib cage forward, lifting the chin up to the sky if we wish to at the same time, dropping that foot behind us with the sole up towards the sky, pushing the knee back as far as we can. Into a seated version of our half bow, Ardha Navasana. And then bringing feet together. Doing our crab pose so we can work a little bit more on upper body strength. We're going to plant our hands so the heels are resting on the hands, fingers around the outside. We're going to press into our feet and use our core strength as we lift those hips up off our chair. If this bothers our hands or wrists or shoulders at all, we can move with our breath or just sit down and rest for a minute or two. And then as we sit down, we're going to make sure that our Hips are nice and loose, especially if we are not doing this as a continuation of part one. So we're just going to bring the inner edges of our feet together, lift our heels off the floor, and do some butterfly wings to help loosen up through the hips. We can hold them open, trying to get as much Movement, outward, external rotation, stretching through the inner thighs as possible. Then we're going into our Janner Zusasana, our one-legged seated forward fold. We're going to straighten out one leg. We're going to take the other leg and externally rotate it. So we want to be up on the toe. If we have our foot flat on the floor. We limit the motion that we can get of turning that knee out toward the side. We're going to take this to a forward fold. Those of us who have short arms, a little bit tight through the hamstrings, any soreness in the lower back, might want to grab onto the band so that we can stay with a nice strong back as we go into these poses. So we have one knee turned out toward the front. We're going to pull as tight as we can on the band and get our spine as long as we can. And as we always do on our forward fold, we do our hip hinge. So we think about tightening abs, tightening quad, coming down, coming down, keeping our elbows tight as we bring our body down toward our leg. And then if we'd like, we can slowly walk our hands down that band. If we feel as though we're going to slide off the chair, we're going to hold on to the chair with one hand, but making sure if we do that, that we don't twist through the shoulders, that we keep our shoulders Mid, the midline of our body lined up with the inside of that front leg. The harder we can push through the heel of that long leg, the more we're going to get work being done through the calf, through the ankle, the heel of that long foot. And then slowly setting up. We're going to work on flexibility on this front leg and using the band will help if we have short arms. If we can, if we choose, we can just hold on to our leg. If we want to use a band, we don't have to buy a yoga strap, we can use a bathrobe band, a dog leash, whatever is appropriate length, but nothing stretchy. We don't want to be using one of the exercise bands. We can always hold on to the chair, the back of the chair, for additional support, but we're going to pull our right knee as tight as we can in toward our chest then slowly straighten out that leg, if we'd like. Hand can be reaching on our foot, which is my choice right now. When I get to the other side, I alternate and use the band instead. And as we keep our shoulder blades retracted in toward our spine, depressed down toward our waistline, so we don't round through the shoulders at all, we're going to slowly move that foot out toward our side. Taking our time, enjoying the journey, recognizing that if we go slow, we get better stretch, longer range of motion. We can also tell more readily when we are going to get to a point where we're not going to be comfortable that we're going to strain. And coming back, we're going to cross that foot all the way over to the other side. I'm going to switch hands. You might do the same thing, but again, you may be holding on to the upper leg, the lower leg and trying to pull it as far as we can. When we had it abducted, 
out to the side, then we were strengthening the muscles on the outside of the leg. Now we are doing the reverse, stretching those muscles. Tensor fascia lata goes from the bony part of the crest, the iliac crest, down to the IT band. Sartorius starts at the same place, comes across the top of our leg to the inside of our knee. Now we're gonna pull that leg back. We're gonna get it straight out in front of us. We're gonna take this to a twist by pulsing on our back hip, rotating around toward the front of the chair, bringing our hand down to the side of the chair for leverage, maybe holding on to the outside of our foot, maybe lifting our hands forward and back, and then dropping that foot as we come to the front. We're going into our cradle to baby so we can loosen up a little bit more through the hip area, muscles of the legs. So we can just lift the foot off the floor and just swing that knee in and out. But if we can, we can lift it up high enough that we can get it so that it's lifted up off our opposite leg and just keep moving it in and out. Trying to bring it a little bit further toward the outside of the stabilized leg each time we move. And now we're going to let that leg rest on the upper thigh. We're going to straighten out that supporting leg. If this doesn't work for us, we're welcome to drop that foot all the way down to the floor, putting the toes, keeping that externally rotated again. We're still thinking about keeping the spine as tall as we can. And we're going to do our hip hinge again, coming forward slowly, bringing our elbows down in toward our hips, getting our abdominal area tightened up and pulling in toward our leg. And then if we want to walk our hands further forward, we can do that. Maybe reaching toward our toes, maybe just touching just beyond our ankle of the bent leg. And then slowly sitting up. We're going to take this to a spinal twist, so we're going to pulse on the hip of the long leg so that we start turning through the abdominal area first. Then we're going to rotate through the rib cage, across the shoulders, reaching our hand around to the side of the chair or maybe bending it, bringing it back behind us and seeing if we can get those fingertips all the way over to our opposite elbow. If we're feeling any tension in our neck, we can drop our chin down toward our chest and just gently move it from one shoulder to the next. And then we're going to unwind, coming back, lining up our midline with our long life. We're going to plant our other foot on the floor and take this to our half boat, working on our abdominal strength, our quadriceps, our hip flexor. We're going to try and bring the knee up so that our knees are even with each other. Try and flex the extended leg. Flex leg. Keeping our shoulder blades tight. Even if we pull them back, we're not letting our shoulders round. We're keeping that same long length of spine. Hands can be out to either side. We can hold onto the back of the legs and then dropping that foot to the floor. We're going to make sure that our muscles are nice and loose. If we'd like, before we switch to the opposite side, we can walk our feet in place, just tapping up and down, let our legs flop in and out, whatever we need to do. Any tension we might feel in our back, we can just start doing a little bit of arching before we go over to the opposite side. So again, we want to make sure that this leg that's going to be doing all the work is nice and loose so we can let it flop in and out a bit. We're going to straighten up the back leg, flexing through the foot and moving the chair so that it can stay entirely within the camera range. This time I'm going to be using the band. We're going to start as we did last time in our forward fold. So I'm going to put the band around the sole of that long leg, leverage and pull hard. Before we do our hip hinge, we're going to make sure that the belly comes down toward our thigh first, keeping our elbows tight. And then if we like, I find it easiest just to roll my hands around the side of the band as I come further forward. As always, we take our time, enjoy the journey, don't rush the movement at all. And 
slowly sitting up. We'll do the same flexion, abduction, adduction. With the forward leg on this side, I'm going to use the band this time. So I make sure that the band is around the sole of the foot, lifting the knee, pulling it into my chest before we start straightening out our leg. The higher we can lift, the more stretch we get through the hamstring. Yoga is excellent for strengthening around the knee because it works the muscles above and below, inside, outside, top and bottom. We're going to take this to our abduction out to the side so we stretch the muscles on the inner thigh, strengthen the muscles on the outer. And again, speed should be slow. Moving too fast in the poses causes the muscles to tighten up or in the flight or fight response. And then we're going to come back and switch to the opposite work. So inner thigh muscles contract, start strengthening as we swing that leg as far as we can across the top of the planted leg. Making sure we're now we're rounding the shoulders and then we're going to come back. Keeping this leg long, we can continue to hold onto the band. We can just, as we go into our twist, pulse around through the hips, that corkscrew motion, and turn around so that we can get our other hand behind the chair, or we can lift, getting the hands behind us, even with our shoulder if possible, or letting it drop lower if that's where our body wants to be today. And then dropping that foot to the floor into our cradle the baby so we can maximize how comfortable the muscles on this leg feel we can either just hold on around the knee and swing it in and out we can externally rotate that leg even more grab on below the shin or we can bring our hand around the outside holding on to our foot but we're just going to rock that baby in and out And then with our supporting leg straight, flexing through the foot to maximize the work that's going to be done. If we can, we would like to have our shin, our ankle resting on our supporting leg. But if that's straining at all, especially through the outside of that forward hip, we can plant that foot down on the floor instead. We'd still like to keep it externally rotated so that we're staying up off the heel so we can get it turned as far as we can out to this side. But preferably if we can bring it up so that it's resting on our leg, we get even more work being done through that area of our body. Hip hinge again. So if we'd like, we can use the band on the supporting leg, just as we did when this foot was on the floor pulling belly down toward our legs and then slowly walking our hands further, further, further forward. Making sure this top leg is not pushing down into the knee. If that is, we're going to sit up and pull it back or drop it down to the floor. And then as we sit up, we're going to take this to a twist. So we're going to rotate out toward the front of the chair, pulsing on the back hip, first moving through the rib cage, or the, the hips before we get to the rib cage, and then turning around as far as we can to get our hand to the opposite side of the chair. Again, if we're having any tension in our neck, we can just let our ear drop toward the back shoulder, lift it toward center, and drop it to the opposite side. And then rotating around toward the front. We're going to go into our half bow, Ardha Navasana. Again, if we want to use the band, we can do that. We're going to slowly pick that foot off the floor. We can have our arms out to the side. We can hold on to the backs of our thighs. If we want a little support, we can just hold on to the band. And thinking about pulling our shoulders tall, so the spine is nice and straight. We don't have the shoulder blades rolling forward and pulling our elbows as tight as we can to the side to really leverage and get the lift, get the strength through the back. And dropping that foot to the ground. We're going to take this into a forward fold. 
So if you feel more secure on the chair, we can turn around so that we're facing the front. I'm going to stay facing to the side just for vis visibility. And again, we have the choice of using the band or not, whatever seems to work best for us today. If we think we're going to slide off the chair, we obviously want to hold on to the chair instead of letting our hands be forward. But we make sure that we never have the hands floating in space. We don't want to put all the weight of our shoulders and our arms into our lower back. So we sit up nice and tall, flexing through the feet, pushing through the heels, keeping the legs working. And then we do our hip hinge. Always working with the lowest part of the spine. Thinking about bringing our belly down as low as we can toward our legs, then our heart down toward our knees. Slowly walking our hands forward, we can drop them down to the floor, walk them along the floor, we can bring them down our shins. If we can reach our feet, that would be great, but we're not going to be concerned if the hands are up higher. We're just trying to maximize the stretch through the back. The more we flex the feet, the more we get it in the legs. The more we get the abs down in toward our legs, the more we get the stretch through the back of the hips and the lower back. The further forward we can reach the hands, the more we move that stretch up into muscles like the trapezius, the rhomboids that hook the shoulder blades in toward our spine. Latissimus dorsi goes all the way from the spine in the back, along the back to the inside of the arm, hooking up to the humerus. So they're all getting a good stretch as we reach forward. And then sitting up tall. We're going to take this to another upper body strengthening so we're going to plant our hands on opposite sides of the chair. More gentle version is to plant our feet flat on the floor so that we can use a little bit more strength of our legs to help us stay lifted. If we want we can keep the legs straight. We're going to use our core strength especially tightening through the glutes, the hamstrings, muscles of the lower back and try and lift our hips off the chair. If they never succeed in reaching upward and getting away from the seat of the chair, that's fine. But if we can, we will do that. If we don't want to stay in place, we can lift and lower the hips, or we can continue. Squeezing the glutes as tight as we can is going to help lift the hips so that we actually have the legs extended behind us. And then dropping down to our chair. We're going to plant our feet flat on the floor and we're going to go into our fold boat. So again, we can use the band if we'd like and just take it wrapped around the soles of both feet. Or we can just hold on to the backs of our thighs. Shoulder blades tight again, making sure we never round the back. That can cause potential problems to the spine. We just start lifting our legs and seeing if we can walk the hands a little bit closer so that we're tightening a little bit more through the abs. And then dropping both feet to the floor. We're going to make sure we're equally planted, both sit bones tight on our chair. But we want to make sure that we're sitting a little bit further forward so that we can do a little bit of movement through the legs. We're going to step our feet a little bit further apart, maybe so they're lining up with the legs of the chair or even a little bit further out. Spine nice and straight, hands resting maybe comfortably on the side of the chair. If we'd like to, we can even bring them out to either side. But we're just going to do some pinwheel legs. Up on our toes, swinging the legs out. My left side, your right, I guess, if you're facing me. And just trying to bring them as far as we can without moving through the torso over to the side. And the next time we do that, we're going to hold them there. Still keeping our shoulders squared, we're going to take far hand and bring it out to the thigh, see if we can push it a little bit closer in toward the seat of the chair. Trying to get a little bit more work through the gluteus, medius, and menoris on the hip, that tensor fascia lata again, sartorius. And now we're going to take this to a more complete twist by sliding the front foot back, the back foot forward, bringing our ankles and our knees together. Trying to leverage those knees out to the side now as we pulse on 
the front hip, rotate through the rib cage, rotate around as far as we can to the side. Maybe even taking that backhand, bringing it to the space between the seat and the back of the chair so we can work a little bit harder on tightening the muscles of the upper shoulder and turning out toward the side. releasing and slowly rotating back toward the front. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side, starting with our legs separated, doing the swinging out to the side. We have our feet flat on the floor. We're limited to how far they can go. So we think about lifting up the heels so that we can do that external rotation on the forward leg, internal rotation on the back, getting a nice lubricating job to that hip joint. Then we're going to hold the pose, trying to leverage hand against leg to see if we can push it a little further, but at the same time, we're not trying to pull the shoulder over to the side. And then we're gonna pull the front foot backward, the back foot forward so we can bring the ankles, the feet, the knees together, and take this to a deeper twist, rotating through belly, rib cage, heart, corkscrewing from the lowest part of the torso. And again, trying to see if we can get that back hand planted on the seat of the chair so we can really turn through the shoulders. We're trying to get that ringing, twisting, cow-like motion through the center of our torso so we can maximize the release of toxins, the flow of blood and oxygen, improve our digestion at the same time that we're getting rid of the stress up and down our spine. And then coming back towards center. Planting our feet flat on the floor, making sure we're seated well on both sit bones, letting our arms rest comfortably on our lap. Maybe using one of the yoga mudras, the hand gestures. And just tuning into our breath, giving ourselves a few minutes to find that sense of peace within. Breathing in tranquility as we breathe out tension. Breathing in serenity as we breathe out stress. Breathing in harmony as we breathe out hatred and discord. Letting go of our stressors. Letting go of our fears. Breathing in hope for the future. And anytime we're ready, we can unwind. Shake out our arms, maybe walk our feet in place. Stay longer if you wish, or bring our arms around, stretching high to the sky before we bring our palms together down the heart center. Namaste. Namaste.